What's up, everybody? And thank you again for tuning in to my channel for another review. And today, we're definitely going to be talking about a film that I was very, very interested in checking out. And because if that's if you know just a little bit about me, you know the things that I like, and you know that this was definitely a match made in heaven for me. But this film is titled Cage Fighter Worlds Collide, and it is going to be releasing October 9th digitally. Um, and I believe it's going to be on fight.tv and a couple of other video on demand uh, services. So you can check it out there. But so, hey, if you don't know by now, yes, I do like professional wrestling, as you can see back there. And I love MMA. And quite frankly, to just sum it all up, I love combat sports. I, you know, one of the biggest things I miss right now in the pandemic is being able to see some of these things in person. I mean, I've had some of the best memories of my life. Uh, seeing some of these uh, events in person, and this is nothing like it. I've been to the likes of uh, Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather, Anderson Silver versus Nick Diaz, um, and and numerous pay per views for WWE, AEW, um, and just all the professional wrestling on, on every level. So, like, hey, this it's what I like. Much as I like movies, I love combat sports. But so, a film about combat sport is always like a yes, gotta check it out. But one that's using stars within the sport, and you're talking about a crossover within it. Oh, I had to see how this had to be done. So definitely wanted to check this out, and let's get into this right now. So Reese Gibbons, who's played by Alex Montagelli, he is an MMA fighter over in the UK. He's an actor, um, and, you know, in the movie as Reese, this guy five time uh, is the world champion who's, you know, have had five recent uh, title defenses. He is just living on top of the world. He can't be touched. He is bringing in all the money. He's getting all the endorsements. It, he, he's on cloud nine. He, 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 there's nothing that can stop this guy. Well, his promoter, which he uh, works for or he fights within... Um, the, the promotion called Legends, which Legends is just as equivalent to a UFC or Bellator. They say, look, we got something very special for your sixth title defense. And the big news and idea that they got is supposed to going to change the world. It's absolutely going to bring in all the money. It is what's best for business. Well, that's challenging Randy Stone. Randy Stone is played by AEW champion John Moxley formerly known as Dean Ambrose, who is billed in this movie by his name, government name, and Jonathan Good. That's right. They're going to have him challenge a pro wrestling world champion against the MMA world champion for his sixth title defense. And it makes sense because, again, it's going to generate tons of money. You're going to bring an audience from both of these sports and it's just going to be the most talked about thing. And in the real life, it, it has worked. When Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather, it literally changed the world. It was one of the most memorable, but most watched and talked about events in all of time. So it, it absolutely works. But let's talk about this for a quick second. Now, Randy Stone, again, played by John Moxley. He is basically John Moxley with a new name. He, they show footage of him in AEW. They show him with the AEW championship. Um, they bill him from Cincinnati. His weight and, and, and his height is billed as John Mossy. He is exactly who he is. Quite frankly, he's so much him. When he cuts promos, it is literally him. Like, I could imagine him handed, hand, they handed him the script and said, we want you to do this. And he was just like, I don't even need this. This is who I am on a week to week basis. So, it is so naturally him. It is like amazingly good. And John Moxley, you know, from his time in uh, when he was in WWE and he starred in that film, 12 Rounds, he showed sprinkles of being, being able to be an actor. Um, so, and, and again, when the world of professional wrestling, it really does prepare you for life beyond it. And acting is definitely one of the career choices that has proven successful a lot of them, i.e. The Rock, i.e. John Cena. So it just follows suits. But the idea of him not just, you know, auditioning and, and playing a role, he's playing himself here. So when they have to, in, in this story, when they have to sell the fight, he is literally cutting a promo just like John Moxley. It is so good. It is, it, it's absolutely the best part of this movie. Like, 
you just see how much of a star he is. And on top of that, as a viewer, it just really convinces you to want to watch this fight. You want to see how it go down because, I mean, they are talking trash like no other. But anyway, moving forward. So Reese doesn't even give this guy a chance because he's a pro wrestler and it's fake and all that other hoopla. And surely, uh, but sure enough, from underestimating him, it causes him a, a defeat. And his world crumbles around him. He loses endorsement. He loses his movie deal. He loses everything. Finances are bad. And he's just literally at rock bottom. And we see a, a redemption story for Reese who uh, uh, scratches and claws, uh, blood, sweat, and tears to get back on the mountaintop. So that's basically what this story is about. Um, so let me kind of go down some things really quick. Now, the beginning part of this film, because you know me, I got to I got to I want to look at this both as a movie critic, but also as a as a person uh, who who is a connoisseur of uh, combat sports. The initial choreography within the first uh, fight scene inside of the, uh, the first match in, inside of the cage, it felt really cinematic, meaning it vividly was displayed as a movie. Didn't feel like a fight. Felt like I was watching a movie of people fighting. But as it goes on, it, it got better to me. It, it, it definitely got better because that's one of my harshest things is that, you know, especially with boxing movies, does it feel like a real boxing fight or does it feel like they're being staged to throw punches? Like it, the choreography really, really is important. Uh, but you see it get better because um, you see in the scenes where they're just sparring or training, um, that looks really authentic all the way into the fa final fight. I think that comes off like it, it really builds up the story for what it's worth. Um, and it, and it, and it just comes off a, a way better authentic than what it initially started as. Um, by the way, Chuck Liddell's in this movie and not even as a cameo, but he's actually, uh, Reese's trainer. So it's always good to see MMA legend and hall of famer, UFC hall of famer, Chuck Liddell. And with that being said too, there's tons of cameos in this. You have Christian, uh, who's a WWE le uh, hall of famer. You have uh, Matt Hardy, you have Bully Ray, Tommy Dreamer. I um, mean, you have some other MMA legends and BJJ legends in this as well, too. So, like, a ton of good, reputable people in this movie. And the idea of them being in this movie is because they are the ones who give their testimony about who they think is going to win the fight and how. And they also speak about the integrity of both boxing and um, I mean, MMA and wrestling and basically like why this makes sense and the, who st how does he stand a chance and does he not stand a chance and all that stuff so it really builds into the fight and that's what this is like this movie really is about having the viewers feel invested into wanting to go see or pay for this fight like it, it, it is an entire hour and a half movie of building for a mega fight uh, with that being said they used um, promos and vignettes to build the fight felt super authentic just like a real fight i thought they did a really good job with that um but <laughs> speaking of john mosley too so like yeah they show him with AEW footage like in the ring with the belt and you know all the little stuff that they, they would usually show they also show like scenes of the crowd but it's so funny and the reason why i laugh is because like they use some of that AEW crowd scenes in other like crowd scenes and like try to like splice it in when you can tell like wait that's actually from AEW so yeah <laughs> um but i will say that um you know the one thing about this is that i thought this movie told a good story a good story about redemption and the american dreams so that's always an easy story to tell and yeah i thought the choreography progressively got better it wasn't great but it was, it was still enjoyable um, I felt like this movie had a lot of building, like uh, the movie Southpaw did, and and it had some similarities like um, Creed too. So like a lot of you know, you can tell that this movie definitely um, did its homework into how do you make a successful combat movie, and they definitely pulled from good sources, and they just all come together in a good mixing bowl, um, and it worked out. Uh, the other thing I will say is that there definitely was holes in the plot. Like, the ending, for one, I was just like, that's a no. Like, it's, again, somebody who's a who's a, 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 a MMA and combat sports connoisseur, like, the ending, I, I would say why, but like, yeah, the ending definitely had a problem that I just was not very fond of. But yes, there was holes in the plot, but 
nonetheless, like it was, it was still enjoyable. But I will say, like, I really wanted to like this film, so I'm just a little, um, I'm a little unsatisfied. But I like for what it's worth, it was entertaining and um, definitely a good watch. And on top of that, too, because I, I'll be a hundred percent honest, I could be overly serious about this film, but the film tone wasn't. It, and, and if there's any indication, because yes, it's fighting and then it's blood and the story, whatever, whatever. But if there's any indication that the film should not be taken probably as serious as I am, it's the score, which is really light um, and kind of uplifting, kind of, you know, giggity a little bit, shall I say. Uh, especially with like the, the antics of like when he was on top of the world and he's getting all the endorsements and just, you know, that that lavish life, shall I say. Um I thought that was the biggest indication to like, hey, you know, this is still supposed to be a really light movie and not something that should be dark or uh, real gritty like we've seen in other films. Like South Paul, for instance. South Paul, you, if you've seen that film, you know, like, it gets dark quick. Um, but nonetheless, you know, Cage Fighter, uh, uh, Worlds Collide is coming out October 8th. You can find it on fight.tv and other video on demand services. I want to know what you all think. I'm going to say it is that without a doubt, if you're a wrestling fan, check out John Moxley in this because he gets it in. But if you're not a wrestling fan, then definitely check this out because I thought that, um, I, I, I thought overall that the movie worked and it was entertaining. And, um, I was really, I was really impressed by, uh, Alex's performance here. I mean, from a guy that was, just a, a, a cage fighter to to now turn actor, you know that's a hard transition. And much like with this sport, kind of, with this uh, movie, kind of talk about jumping sports. I thought that he's doing a good job in getting his career going as an actor and um, as the lead of this film. And I would be very much interested to see him in future stuff. Oh, and I, I have to add the one thing that was really getting under my skin was um, the punching sounds. I feel like there was just so much of it that I was getting a little bit annoyed about it. Like the punching noise that they, that, that they make. It's, it's clearly, um, it's clearly being dubbed in, but like, I just feel like it was too excessive at, at a point. And then like the commentary from the people calling the fight, I feel like that was the, because like, if this was supposed to be the biggest fight, then I'm expecting commentary to be going off the rails with excitement. And they felt really metal dramatic in this. Like they, like they weren't excited at all. So I almost could have did without it. And for me, I love commentary. I know people who want to watch their sports and maybe want to tune that out. I love when a commentary hypes me so much that I want even more action in a fight. And, you know, that's why some of the best commentary in the world uh, is who they are because they that's what they do. They invest you to the action and they really get your adrenaline and pumping. I feel like the commentary that called this movie, they was just like really not out of it. It felt super dubbed. I was like, yeah, I would, I, <laughs> to be honest, I could have done without it, period. If it, if it was going to be that, I would have just done without it. But yes, definitely know in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you've seen this movie, if you're looking forward to it, are you going to check it out? All your thoughts in the comments, please leave them all down there. But until then, folks, everybody stay safe and catch you all very soon.